Ladies and gentlemen, we have the boss tier list. I didn't do it last week. I wanted to split the Desert Treasure 2 and boss tier list up. But this week, we have the boss tier list for Varinscape. This, I believe, shows almost every single boss in the game, not including quest bosses. So it doesn't have Galvec or um, Gloff or whatever it is, the Seren from Song of the Elves. But it does have uh, post-quest bosses, which we'll be assessing them on. What we're assessing the bosses on is uh, how fun they are to kill. Uh, the, the mechanical depth, shout out to No Monkey. Um, the loot as well, just whether it's worth your time killing them, whether they're fun, how they look. It's really just going to be, it, it, it depends on the boss. If I like the boss, no matter how bad it is, it's probably going to get a good rating, okay? It's my own opinion at the end of the day. Um, and if you don't agree with it, well, that's why you're the viewer and I'm the creator. So, hopefully we can agree on most things. We will start off with the Barrows Brothers. We'll pull all six out here. This is going to be quite a long tier list, so I'll try to keep it short and sweet where I can. Um, and all six Barrows Brothers are rated completely different, uh, believe it or not. I think, this is a hot take, but I think Varak um, is... How, is that a decent size? That's a decent size. I think Varak is a D tier boss. I think Varak sucks. The reason I don't like Varak is because he hits through prior. It's annoying. It's that simple. I said it. It's annoying to verse. He's one of the worst bosses to, to fight. He hits through prior. So because of that alone, it sucks. Um, and then you have the other melee brothers. These are all going to be C tier. Now the reason these are C tier is because you can pray against them. Otherwise, they're pretty much dead. Like they're just mid-level bosses. You don't really have much to like gain from killing them. The Bar I know the Barry Chess in general is like, you know, you either get spooned or you don't. Uh, but in terms of difficulty, the only, the only annoying thing about them is the combat achievement. Where you're trying to kill them without being attacked by them. And all they're doing is hitting you because the mechanics are, are dumb as shit. So they're all C tier. Now you have Aram. Aram is, in my opinion, also D tier. Because Aram is annoying, especially at lower levels. Uh, there is some form of, not, not tank, but he's the most resilient of the brothers in terms of taking damage. Especially when you don't have a decent ranged weapon. You can kind of get onto mage pretty quickly with Ivan's Blast. And Carol is the most likely to kill you. If you don't have prayers, Carol's is the deadliest because he hits fast. He's strong, um, but super easy to kill. So he's also C tier because you just pray. If you don't have prayers, however, Carol is the most likely to kill you, in my opinion. What's the secret KC for the Barrow's Chest? The secret KC is 112. Average Varak fan versus Chad, Daryl, and Joya. They're all pretty much the same at the end of the day. That's the Barrow's Brothers for you. The Giant Mole. Big boy. Very simple to kill. Very profitable, to be, uh, to be honest. I think it's, what, close to 2 mil an hour killing the Giant Mole for Burr's Nest at the moment. Very good, very easy. A lot of people Darak bomb this boss. I prefer to have um, the Bow for Crystal or the T-Bow. I think those are, are far more enjoyable, a lot more fun. I haven't tried it with the Soul Reaper Axe yet. Giant Mole, once you have the Fally Shield, beautiful boss to kill. You can do it all day. Very easy, B-tier boss. Almost zero risk, plenty of reward, always a profit. And um, <laughs> that's, there's really not much else to go about it, to be honest. It's awesome. It's, 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 it's a beautiful boss. Who's this guy? This one's the Fossil Island archaeologist, right? This is the one that killed a friend. This guy is annoying. He's annoying to get to. His drop table is okay. He does do uh, the unstrung rune crossbows, I believe. Or no, he does the 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 he does the limbs, doesn't he? Um, otherwise, he's just kind of. If you lag, you're dead. But if you don't lag, you're fine. He's a pretty D tier boss. It's not really like it's not really worth grinding him, in my opinion. Just like you go to him for the combat task, you never go back to him. So, in fact, that probably makes him E tier because his value to the game is almost uh, nothing at the end of the day. Dagonoff Kings, you've got the one that ranges you. You melee him. He's annoying. Uh, the Archer's Ring is an overpriced hunk of garbage, which makes it good because idiots will buy the Archer's Ring for a high price, even though it gives almost no value. Therefore, it's good to farm. Dagonoff Kings, uh, this one, which one is this? The range one, whatever his name is, he can go C tier, okay? And so can the mage one. He's pretty much in the same boat, except the ring is cheaper and he will hit you harder. But otherwise, the bones, once you've got the elite da um, the elite Fremnic task, the diary, the, the bones are noted and it's a beautiful grind. You can get plenty of bones as much as you want. And this boss will be B tier because you can AFK him, say spot him, and farm him all day. Is that Rex? I think for the Berserker's rings. The pets are awesome, and you know what? I, I'm glad that the pets are separate drops. Instead of one pet, that'll transmog between the three. Because that makes the grind uh, longer, which is annoying, I guess. But it also means you have three extra pets, rather than just one that transmogs. Transmog pets are cool, but having more pets is better. So, 
I doubt we'll ever see something like that again. We've got now the Seracnus pet. I didn't know Seracnus existed for a very long time. Sorry, Seracnus boss. Uh, this boss will actually kill you, believe it or not. If you're not paying attention, this boss will fuck you. Very, very quickly. Uh, so you do have to stay uh, switched on. Um, but the drop table is kind of crap. There's a whole lot of risk and not a whole lot of reward because you don't really come to this boss once you've done the combat tasks. Why are you looking for a cudgel? I think that the Dragon Mace is a pretty good alternative for the cudgel to go straight into a Hasta. Um, that's really it. No other reason to really go to this boss. So he's pretty E tier. Seragnus does kind of suck at the end of the day. I will be honest with you. Next boss we have is the Cowfight Queen. It's a hot take, guys, but I think the Cowfight Queen is an S tier boss. I think the Alpha Queen, the Alpha Cafe Queen is uh, done exceptionally well. Okay. The reason Cafe Queen, uh, 100 egg drops for restores OP. No, it's not for Seragnus. No, because you use Tower of Life. Okay. The Cafe Queen is S tier because the drop table is done right. You might not like the drop table, but the mechanics of the drop table is perfect. The mechanics of the drop table is two roles. One is a guaranteed consumable role, potion or food. The other role is a guaranteed normal drop. So you guarantee two drops every time. One is food, which is arguably to extend the trip. And the other one is for money. It's a great system that they've not used again since. They should be using that system on more bosses rather than just having money printers. I think, I think that role is, I think that system is perfect. The boss also has an annoying habit of ignoring defense, but I think that's totally fine because you can work your way around it by off ticking him by flinching him with a thrall as well, using Venge to take advantage of it. And for the most part, the pet is badass. It's a big pet. Cavite Queen is S tier. I think Cavite Queen is fun. Also, Cavite Queen drops the Dragon Pickaxe now, which people didn't like at first, but I think you're more likely to die to the Cavite Queen as a hard crow man than you are to the wilderness. So, uh, yeah, that's a good thing. Next, we have the God Wars bosses. Now, this is where things might get a bit spicy. I think Kriara is the easiest boss to solo um, and is D tier. I think Kriara is shit, okay? He's annoying because his normal drop table is just filled with crap. There's ranged potions and defense potions or magic potions or some dumb shit. I think it's ranged and defense, which is annoying. There's ring crossbows, which is annoying. There's no good value except for the armadil drops, which is, like the armadil armor is shit unless you're going for Missouri. Uh, you take an intense amount of damage for no fucking reason and the boss fight especially when soloing is a bit boring Even though it's easy you just stand in the corner and you, you shoot arrows at the dog. That's about it So it's just you're just consuming resources uh, on you know Hoping you get a good roll. It's crap. Ziliana is B tier Ziliana is the next easiest to solo because it's just running around the room You want to make sure you have stamina's and then the drop table in Ziliana is actually really good um, as opposed to Kriara's, because you get prayer potions, uh, Rainar weed, you get uh, rune drops, and I think you get snake grass as well or some shit, which is pretty handy. So overall, the, the normal drop table is pretty good. Unfortunately, the uniques are kind of shit because it's just AGS and uh, sorry ACB and SGS. But the pet's badass. The fight is super simple. The minions are kind of crap, but otherwise, it, it's. It's not too bad. I don't mind that room at all. Kriya's a cool pet. They all have cool pets. Absolutely, they do. Uh, then you have the next easiest to solo, which is Bandos. This is the second most difficult boss to solo, in my opinion. Um, I think Bandos... I think Bandos is also B tier, purely because his normal drop table is shit. It's a lot of effort to just go dry on a BCP and a Torso, which lets... Uh, sorry, a, a BCP and Tassus, which, let's be honest, you don't really need. You, you don't really need that. Let's be honest, uh, especially when you keep getting Bandos boots. So the pet, badass. Annoying pet for people, you know, it's nice and loud, but um, I think the fight itself is awesome. Darok S tier place for two bucks. Uh, the last thing you can expect me to do is to sell out for people who's donating money to manipulate how this, this tier list works, okay? However, I will do it this one time. Darok is uh, S tier, okay? No one ask why, no one ask how, just I'm going to leave a gap there for now. Just put something else in there. Okay, but Darok is now S tier. Uh, I'm not a sellout. So, yes, Bandos goes B tier. And then Krill, being the hardest to kill, in my opinion, when soloing, of course, um, the most likely to kill you, is D tier as well. Krill sucks. His drop table is shit. 
Uh, everything that's rare on him is dropping in value. He doesn't really drop much outside of that, to be honest. Thank you, Ozzy Todd. Appreciate it. So I think Krill is crap. It's a lot of effort and a lot of risk for what is essentially one of the worst rewards in Gobble's Dungeon. Uh, even though it might feel necessary getting some of the items, it's really not worth your time, in my opinion. Next we have... Oh, I guess we have Next as well, right? Next is a Gobble's Dungeon boss. Uh, next, in my opinion, is... A tier. Oh. Next is A tier. I think Next is a good boss. Okay? It's a shit grind. It's a good boss. Uh, it's a fight that teaches you a lot. It's a fight that requires teamwork. You can't just go in and solo. The drop rates on Next are insane. Okay? Shit boss? Well, no, it's not. Um, Next has a drop table where it's pretty much 1 in... 1 in 64 or something to get a, a, a good to get a good piece, like a piece of Torva, which is insane. A lot of people that don't like Nexus have likely just done Mass Worlds. I think doing small teams of about 5 people is good. Why no S? Because he's A tier. Um, he does have a lot of shit mechanics. The grind does get long. Okay, the, the mechanics can be annoying. And it does also require you to rely on other people. Brew drinking simulator, only if you're doing it in like duos and trios. The more people you have, the less brews you drink. Uh, I like the the room leading up to next as well, getting the KC. I think getting to next is the best of all Gobbles bosses. It's like, uh, what, three to six essence per kill, and you get good loot from just do killing the uh, the Reavers and the Mages outside. And the best part about next, okay, which has happened to a few people I know, the best part about next is uh, people die at next, and then they run back to next to get their stuff, and they die again and lose all of their items. They lose their crystal, they lose their Tebos. They lose their bofers, all gone. And while that sucks, um, I also think it's fucking hilarious when it doesn't happen to me, so that's good. Next we have Corp. Corp, there's two ways you can kill Corp when soloing. I know I'm doing a lot of this in solo comparisons, but in groups, like, in group, group Corp is fun, I think. I don't like Corp, the group Corp, though, because it's only one drop in the group, and I think that mechanic is, is shit, but that's just the way Corp's designed. Otherwise, I think the, the best thing about the solo corp is I, I prefer the dragon warhammer method with the arc light and the bgs over the the fang and missouri where you just uh death drop a bunch of food because that method sucks i know it's more kills per hour but it's also more chance of getting fucked in the ass per hour and i'm not a fan of that it sucks so doing normal solo corp with defense draining is infinitely better with his uh, zami spear otherwise the drops i mean i did get spooned to arcane sigil um elixir and and shield in 28 kc yes that's a flex otherwise the drop table is kind of meh the Elijah Spirit Shield is valuable, but completely fucking worthless. Spectral Spirit Shield is a pain in the ass to grind. Corp is honestly like a D tier boss. Like, it's it's great fun. The pet looks awesome, but shit, it's a, it's a lot of work just to not get the drop, you know? And then you got the Wilderness bosses. We'll do these two first. The boys, you've got the Chaos Fanatic. Chaos Fanatic is in Dangerous Wilderness, uh, where you can't just teleport away. It is right on an altar. Chaos Fanatic, um, I mean... I don't really have an opinion on him. He's kind of annoying to kill. If I remember correctly, he has quite a bit of range defense, but the best way to kill him is with range. The Bofa. Um, yeah, he's just kind of crap. He's pretty E tier. I don't really care about him. This guy is probably D tier because he's actually really easy to kill. He's not as annoying as the Fossil Island one. He's easy to get to. He's easier to get away from people than any other Wilderness boss. Uh, super simple mechanics. Prey, ma prey range, hit him with mage. Get yourself two ring crossbows and move on. Uh, so I, I think DT is, is pretty fair for that archaeologist. Then you got Scorpio. I think, have they buffed Scorpio yet? If not, they're looking at buffing Scorpio, which means that Scorpio is going to be worth more than like 18k per kill. It's going to be more like 2 mil an hour. That's where they want to kind of take Scorpio's direction. That's awesome. But until then, this boss is annoying as shit, um, and you're just going to get ragged by teams. I don't think I've ever been PK to Scorpio, but I've seen people get absolutely ragged. Scorpio eats here until they fix the drop rates. It's not worth going to Scorpio, in my opinion, at the moment, because um, Scorpio isn't worth the money. Move Cavalry Queen to F, the fuck? Zidus, the reason that Cavalry Queen is not going to F is because that's a bad take, which is why you're the viewer and I'm the streamer. All right, next, uh, KBD. KBD, low key, A tier. KBD's badass. KBD, you can, I, I like the fact that KBD, you cannot ignore the dragon fire mechanics. Like, pretty much every other dragon in the game you can, except for KBD and maybe Galvec, if I remember correctly. So, I like that with KBD. It's guaranteed to take damage. It's guaranteed to keep you no, to keep you from camping the boss. Good Slayer Helmet. Great Slayer Helmet. Great pet. Drop Table isn't actually half bad. There's a bit of risk getting to it. 
And you can't ignore Elliop on the way though? I can, because Elliop can't kill me. He's garbage. Um, K KBD, A tier. It's excellent. You can't put KQ and KBD so highly. Holy shit, they both suck. No, you just suck at the game. How do they suck? How much KC you got in both bosses? How many times have you done Cavo Queen and, and KBD? Have you done the combat tasks? Have you grinded out the pets and the helmets? How many kills have you got on each? Exactly. That's what I thought. Uh, Chaos Elemental. This boss is shit. F tier. Fuck the Chaos Elemental. I don't care what you say. Chaos Elemental is garbage. Everything about him is shit. He's annoying to kill. You can't tell what he's hitting you with. He unequips your items. You get PK'd anyway. It's in a terrible spot. He's annoying. There is nothing cool about the Chaos Elemental. Chaos Elemental is not better than KBD. That is exactly my point. You have one KKC in both, and yeah, I have Master CAs, then you're an idiot. It's that simple. KBD, best boss. I guess I got spurned the head in 10 kills and left. Full bias. That's 100% bias. Next, we have Calvarion. So that's what the C is for. And Vedion. Uh, Calvarion is A tier. Calvarion was done very well, while Vedion is. Vedion is probably B tier purely because of it being in multi wilderness. Okay? So, the reason Calvarion is A tier is because it's been designed excellently. If you do everything right in Calvarion, you take no damage. That's perfect. That's how it should be. That's how the wilderness bosses should be. You do everything right, you take no damage. It's excellent. Very easy to kill. Very easy to access. Very easy to get PK'd as well. I think the the opportunity, the risk versus reward in Calvarion is, is excellent. And they're clearing up the bots I hear too, uh, too, which is awesome. The reason Vedion is beat here is because every boss is automatically worse if it's in multi-combat. It's that simple. While, while yeah, it's a like, well, multi-wilderness, should I say. Yes, the drops are better, but also getting ragged by a team is just, like, not fun. So, that, that automatically makes Caveron better than Vedion, easily. You can still get the pet, you can still get the range, you can still get the Void Worker pieces. Zero problems. Absolutely. You got Castle Pet at 5? Nice. Next, we have the Spodes. We have Spindel and Vendonatus. I think Spindel is better money than... Calvaron, but the thing I don't like about Spindel is that Spindel um, has chip damage you can't really avoid. Spindel's mechanics and um, Venonatus is more annoying of a boss. So I'm putting Spindel in C and Venonatus can go in D for being in multi. I don't, I'm, I'm not honestly the biggest fan of these two bosses. I don't think the spider is very fun. I think the spider just does a lot of uh, annoying damage. Um, and I just, I love PKing at them. I don't like killing them to be honest. They're not as fun in my opinion. Whack a scout about Vedion PKs, don't even bother. Uh, sometimes you, you try going and see if they're not paying attention. RTO, I think, while also has annoying chip damage you can't avoid, is a bit more of a fun fight in a better spot in the wilderness. Um, and PKing there is always fun. So I think RTO can probably go B tier, while Callisto uh, can go C tier. Because Callisto obviously is fun, but again, being in multi. The drop tables on all of them are great. I think Vedion probably has... One of the worst drop tables, not including unique, just like base drop table, if I remember correctly. But I think overall, Vedion is just being completely zero damage, provided you do everything right. Should be how it is. I'm pretty sure there's chip damage to an RTO, unless they removed it. I can't remember now. We did it recently. I, I feel like there's still chip damage if you if you pray correctly. I could be wrong, though. You guys can probably correct me on that. Vedion has the big, the best drop table. It does? Oh, there you go. Mass Callisto Ragon, though? Yeah, well, I mean, it's good fun, but that doesn't make the boss any good. All right, Zora. One of the Zora's the first big boss we had. Well, technically the Kraken was, I think, but Zora is the first big like, well, like like boss that you can access repeatedly on the world without being locked behind Slayer. Um, that was made for Old School RuneScape. Zora is technical. Zora has had many changes over the years. Zora is a lot of fun. Zora will kill you. What I don't like about Zora is that the first 50k until you hit 50k C, all your deaths are free of charge. I think that's a bitch mechanic. I think it's annoying as shit. I also don't like how the Zoro table, I think, works. Uh, the Zoro death works different to other deaths so that Ultimate Iron Man can take advantage of it. Um, Zoro's drop table is great. Zoro, the mutagens are ridiculously rare. I think that's awesome. I, I like the mutagen um, system in this game. The pet's awesome. I think Zoro can go. Zoro, Zoro's probably. I don't like Zora, how you could just, uh, there's consistent unpredictable damage. And we were just talking about this earlier in the Discord. S tier hot take. I don't know if it's S tier. It might be A tier, to be honest. The bots are ruining the prices. I don't really think that matters too much, to be honest. I, I'm not sure if it's bots that are ruining the price or, like, I, I don't think you can blame bots on Zora these days. Like, Zora's been out for nine years. 
Zoro's being farmed by everyone, whether it's boss or not. Like, the prices are going to get tanked. There's that many items in the game. You know, I think Zoro's probably going to be A tier, almost S tier, but it's just a little bit too cunty of a fight sometimes, especially on lower levels. Like, once once you're maxed, it's great, but when you're maxed, you don't really need to be doing Zora. Um, and I don't like that. It, you uh, you don't have to pay for deaths until you're 50kc. I think that's, that's pussy shit, if I'm honest with you. Next, we have Nightmare and Fosani Nightmare. Nightmare, I think, is B tier. Great group content, great fun, annoying as shit to solo. Drops could be a lot better. For Sunny Nightmare, S tier. Okay. For Sunny Nightmare is S tier because. Oh, this doesn't include, include raid bosses, by the way. Uh, so, so, for Sunny Nightmare is S tier because it's fun. It's great. You no, know, great boss sounds. I think the For Sunny Nightmare fight really helps define you as a PVMer, and it helps make you. You, you learn a lot just by doing for Sunday Nightmare. It will sharpen your reactions and sharpen your reflexes as a player. The drops are crap. And I think that it could really use Cowfire Queen's drop drop table where you get a guaranteed resource and a, and a guaranteed normal drop. And that will improve the fight, uh, the, the, the boss dramatically while not shitting out gold per hour, right? The walk automatically makes it DT, the walk. Uh, have you ever heard of getting the teleport? And also the walk's not that bad. One stamina sip, you get there. I don't think it's that bad at all. Walk is not a problem. Mass World Nightmare, most toxic place on RuneScape. Every new person gets roasted to death. Well, you just turn off private chat or public chat and you're good to go. Phantom Muspar, one of the newest bosses to the game. I think the Phantom Muspar is... Um, hmm. Hot take. I think the Phantom Muspar is B tier. Okay. Great fight. The reason the Phantom Muspar is B tier is because... Well, it's also got new mechanics that we haven't um, seen before. Why would I put Phantom Must by S tier? It's terrible. It has printed a shit ton of gold into the game, which is awesome. Okay, that's cool. You get you get a bunch of, uh, you know, good drops. It's bad for the economy in one sense, but good for the economy in another. The reason that the Phantom Must is B tier is because uh, the Vendor Shards, you know, while they can be drops in random succession, personally, I went pretty dry. Um, but the main thing that I don't like about the Phantom Must Bar is the consistency that people keep, well, Jagex keeps fucking it. Every time there's an update, that magic attack hits you through prayer and kills you. I know it's not really the boss's fault, but, um, that stuck with me pretty hard. Imagine if you were a hard cry, man. It's game over, instantly. Like, people genuinely have to avoid the Must Bar on update day just in case it gets fucked. Constantly. Without fail. And I don't have Muffin Pet, so it's B tier. The fight can be really annoying. I don't like that the Tebow is, like... Incredibly inaccurate, but still like just best to send for no fucking reason. I don't think freezing it is Is fun. I like to run around with the sang staff on it and the bofa, but It's a massive supply drain too. I don't have an imbued heart. I don't like that boss Benny Bo shard uh, better than DG2 versus drop mechanics. That's that's where the inspiration came from to be honest Step back method fuck the step back method That's it's cringe shit, okay? Must bar is B, okay? Pet is S. Boss is B. Vorkarth is... Vor... Vorkarth might be A tier, but maybe even S tier. C tier annoying as shit, Vorkarth being annoying. I don't think Vorkarth's that annoying. I think Vorkarth might be B tier, actually. Um... I think maybe... I'm just trying to think, I'm just looking at it, I'm thinking about how Vorkarth is and what the fight's like. I don't like that the unique drop table is literally like one thing. It's like the must pass, like one unique, that's it. And it doesn't really feel super rewarding other than just getting big GP per kills. Not the biggest fan of that. That's another reason why must pass B. It's just like, oh wow, I made a lot of money. Did I get a unique? No, you get a unique and then you don't get anything else. You get a catchy of runes, you get nothing else, you know, or frozen catchy, whatever it is. Vorkarth's kind of the same. I have been really spooned on the pet. The uniques are pretty trash anyway. They're pretty much dead. I mean, the necklace I do like. Um, I think, yeah, Vorkarth could probably go B tier. No, A tier. Fuck it. Vorkarth's A tier because I, I do think it is quite... Vorkarth is harder to kill than Zora, right? There's a challenge there. 
there's a lot more risk at dying one hittable but it does also, there is also like a uh, there's a consistency with the fights but the, but it's not at the same time right every fight's different but the same it's the same mechanics all the way through but you never know which spec you're going to get first and then after that you've got different like you've got different ways to fight them if you want to bring void and range or you want to take melee two completely different fights because then you're favoring mage attacks over range attacks i just think that's really cool um, with Zoro, it's pretty much just send it in range and mage if you want. Same for Muspar, so... Um, I do, I, I like... I like Vorkaf, I think. He's a dog. Va uh, Vorkaf Flame Balls, me the second I'm not looking. Yeah, every time you're not looking, that's pretty much it. Obor for S tier. Um, no, Obor, Obor's not S tier. Obor is... Um, Obor is F, F tier. Fuck Obor. He's a garbage boss. So is, so is this guy. The free play bosses are shit. I don't know why you're trying to rally for them being S tier. They're, they're garbage. They're shit, dude. Absolutely crap bosses. Crap drop tables. What do you mean? What are you saying question marks for? Yeah, you have, you have to farm. That were until recently stackable. Until recently, sorry, unstackable. You have to farm keys that are untradable. Hill Giant Club smacks. So? So does the cudgel. The cudgel does it better. Should I put Seracnus at S tier as well? Giants Club is not underrated. No, the Giants Club is fairly rated. The Obor and, 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 and Bryfighter are both shit. Farming the keys is crap. 100%. The Mystic. I think the Mystic is A tier. You get extra rolls in your clue scroll. The fight is actually really fun, but and also really quick. You just mage and run, basically. It's very simple. But I think the fight looks amazing. It's awesome. If you die in the Mystic, you're a dickhead. Uh, so it's guaranteed extra rolls in the clue scroll. It's nothing but fucking bonuses. Like, who doesn't love Mystics? Mystics? What's it called? What's it called? Sorry. I thought it, is it called a Mystic? Mimic, that's it. Sorry, Mimic, not Mystic. Sorry, you know what I mean, right? The Mimic, that's it. So who doesn't love the Mimic? I get it! Alright, fuck off! The Mimic! Alright, who doesn't love the Mimic? How could you not? Getting the keys to cancel that out, yes. Tomato, potato, exactly. Tomato, potato. What's up, Brittany? How are you? Good to see you. Alright, we got Hespori next. <coughs> Excuse me, goddamn. The Mimstick, that's it. So we got Hespori here. Hespori, in my opinion, is actually a really well designed boss. It's like nearly 13,000 farming XP, which is awesome. It does take a day to a day and a half to grow, which is a little bit annoying. But I think that's fair given the XP you get. The drops are shit. The drops are crap. You get a bucket, that's it. Hasn't really got much else to offer. Um, but the fight is really well done. I think the fight was um, one of the best fights they've actually made in the game in terms of bossing. So I think we can make it C tier. Just because it is actually like a good and risky fight at the same time. But the drops are just shit. Like, the seeds it drops are, other than the three main ones, and the bucket, and the white lily seeds, that's it. You know? How's it now? It's tier. It's insane money, and you can solo it. We have to watch uh, the stream to, to find out. Next, we have the Skatizo boss. Uh, this boss is... Uh, we're going to hopefully do this today on the hardcore, this boss, for the first time. I think this boss is... This was the... Was this... I think this was the first boss... That when the old death system was in, if you went to fight this boss and you died, you were losing your shit. I think Run Plays Games was got really drunk once back when this boss first came out. He went there to do a hard clue, or to get a hard clue, and died, and then like lost so much fucking shit, like hundreds of hours of progression on his Iron Man, which is fucking hilarious. Um, but for the most part, this boss is kind of it's kind of ass to be honest, because you're just running around hitting totems all the time. It's very easy to kill, but it can be really annoying. The Tebow is nuclear until it's not. Um, if you take the Arc Light, you're running around everywhere. The totems keep coming back. I've never had a Dark um, Totem from it. I've never had a Jar of Darkness from it. The pet, I've never had. I'm like fucking 150kc, no pet. Can you believe that? Room needs to be one quarter the size. The room is uh, oversized for sure. The drop table isn't actually too bad, to be honest. Um, and getting a guaranteed hard clue is nice. So I think maybe, maybe C tier is, is where it can sit. While it is shit... Um, it, it does, it does do a good job. Wait, move this back down, please. Fucking whatever, who cares. 
Was it C tier? Did I say C tier? C tier is probably right, yeah. 164 per pet. Yeah, I'm like 150k C. So it's disgusting. Did F shit's annoying with eyes? Oh, the, the pillars? Yeah. Chance to... Uh, the grind to a chance at the fight sucks. The, the grind to get in totems. Yeah, but you can just like do superiors now and, and you get extra... Oh, these are separate. The grotesque... Can you fuck off? Fuck me. Alright, these separate grotesque guardians. Um, so we've got... Which one's this one? Dusk? Dusk, the, the dust fight. This includes when Dawn is in the air and after when Dawn is combined with him. Um, it's super annoying that this second... Like, the game tick, you step under dust, you automatically take damage. Like, it's not like the uh, gauntlet where you can manipulate it and kind of do it on certain game ticks, you don't get stopped, uh, stomped, and it moves the boss around. Um... It's straight up just like, you go near my feet, you're, you're getting stomped on, okay? Uh, which might be a kink for some of you, but it's not for me. Not when I'm in that boss. It's unnecessarily big damage. Um, chip damage through prayer is annoying. Um, and he just sits there fucking hitting you anyway. It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of shit. Drops aside, the drops are okay. The XP is excellent. Um, D tier. And Dawn, a little bit more slutty. A lot easier to deal with because she just sits there and takes it in the ass. Um... It's only annoying when you don't get the orb skip. If you go for the orb skip, if you don't go for the orb skip, you're guaranteed to smash her very quickly. It's a better pet than the other one, so uh, she can go. She can go C tier. I think she's slightly better. No, in fact, she can go B tier because there's no punishment for standing under her at all. Vork not harder than Zora at all. Vorkaf is harder than Zora, idiot. If you don't think that, then you have no fucking clue what you're talking about. Zora is super easy. All right, the Abyssal Sire. You guys ready for this? You guys ready for the Abyssal Sire? I think the Abyssal Sire, doing it recently, is B tier. The drop table is garbage. I've never had an unside. But the fight is not bad when you have a Fang. I don't mind doing it. No chance Vork is harder than Zora. Vorkarf is harder than Zora. We don't need to have this discussion. You can slap Vorkarf, but Zora fuck me real good. That's because you're garbage. I can tell you right now, Vorkarf is harder than Zora. The fact that you can't do Zora doesn't make Zora harder than Volkov. That's just you being shit. It's it's not even a debate. We can have this later, not during the tier list, but Volkov is absolutely a harder boss than Zora. Zora is mind-numbing. It's very simple when you kill Zora. You have, an, uh, you have an island, okay? When Zora is on either the left or right of the island and moves to either of the middle positions, you swap sides. The reason you find Zora hard is because you're looking at the plug-in going, Eh... Uh. Uh, which side? Uh, blue on the mid middle. Uh, gas. Uh, gotta get to the safe spot. Where's the safe spot? I gotta stand there. Uh, and then you're dead because you're too busy, like, drooling all over your fucking lap, trying to finger fuck the fucking plug in. You're making it hard for yourself for no reason. It is not hard. Vorkov will absolutely fucking one hit you. Vorkov will do more damage than you. There's only one part of Zora that actually can fuck you. That's it. You feel called out? You're garbage. That's just, that's, it's that simple. Vorkov is harder than Zora. Vorkarf will hurt more than Zora. Vorkarf is, is more tougher than Zora. Vorkarf requires a BGS for fuck's sake. Do we need to go on? Or can I continue the fucking tier list? Zora requires gear and prey swaps. Vorkarf, you can camp one prey and duck, uh, duck him up. No, Zora does not require gear and prey swaps any more or less than Vorkarf does. You're wrong. So I'm trying to make points that aren't fucking valid, okay? Anyways, um, the Abyssal Sight is actually a relatively fun fight. The drops are shit. Um, but when you get into the Ribbon River, especially with a Fang and a Void Waker, the side can actually be not too bad. You can clean them up pretty quickly. I do like it. Uh, the Kraken, in my opinion, is actually A tier. The Kraken is a good boss. You know why? Because the Kraken, while it being AFK, could still kill you. People still die to it, AFK. Um, and the Kraken also has a good drop table. The Kraken has a really good drop table. S tier because it allows me to play a different game. Um... I don't know if it's S tier because it's pretty one dimensional. But outside of that, the Kraken has like an exceptionally good drop table, dude. Especially explosives makes it awesome, man. It's great. Kraken for S tier. Can you shut the fuck up, idiot? Please? It's A tier. Move on. Cerberus! Everyone's favorite three headed doggy with the one headed dog pet. The prayer drain boss. Cerberus is E tier. Fuck Cerberus. Cerberus sucks. <laughs> the best way to grind Cerberus is the worst way to grind Cerberus, which is by. Uh, standing under it, red xing on the door so he does no damage and taking essentially three and a half minutes to do a kill. Cerberus is shit. 
Cerberus is worse than the Sire every day of the week. Absolutely, Cerberus is garbage. Thermonuclear Smoke Devil. Fun fact, the one of the rarest pet drops in the game is getting the Thermonuclear Smoke Devil pet on that 1kc that you can do off, off uh, Slayer Task for the diary. And your boy got that. So I have a bias towards this boss. Also really fun to do uh, Dragon Claw um, house method. Basically you just teleport to your house, resource back, fairy ring, run to the boss, Dragon Claw spec, finish him with the Salad Blade, teleport to house, refresh, run back, and again, really fun way to do the boss. Honestly, better than I would have uh, thought when I did it. So I think um, this boss is probably B tier. The drop table is kind of shit, so B tier otherwise. Typical Shadow Method is fun. It is, but also it's a lot cheaper to just house teleport when you don't have a shadow. Hydra. Hydra is great money. Hydra has great drops. Hydra is one of the best slay bosses because of how fun it is, how deadly it can be. Um, and the fact that it's behind 95 Slayer I think helps more than anything because that, and you need to be on task. That stops people farming the fuck out of it like certain other bosses. I think the Hydra can sit, maybe even S tier to be honest. Like there's almost nothing wrong with the Hydra when you think about it. 95 Slayer is not fun, but you gotta get it anyway. I, I don't think, I think there's, there's almost nothing wrong with the Hydra in general. Um, other than going dry, right? Which is a, a problem every boss can have. Otherwise, it's pretty It's pretty good. The claws don't exist. Uh, you'd be surprised. I think Hydra might actually be, uh, in, in terms of Slay Boss, it might actually be one, one of the best done bosses, for sure. Absolutely. Hold on, I've got a quiz on the Hardcore Gim. Yeah, get, get in me, dude. Let's go. Fuck yeah. I, I think that's fair. Because there's a good amount of risk. You still can't take your eye off it. Five head looking motherfucker. Yeah, dude. Next, we have the Gauntlet. Now, this will include the actual process of doing the Gauntlet, as well as fighting the boss. Because, if you just do the boss fight, then how do you measure that, right? I guess I don't, I guess it doesn't really matter. I think just the Gauntlet in general, the normal Gauntlet in general is probably like some B tier content. Like, you can actually make pretty good money, if that's all you can do. It's a great introduction to somewhat dangerous PVM. It's dangerous for Hulk Ryman, which is always a plus. I think the normal gauntlet does a good job at just kind of preparing you for what's to come when it when you start doing PVM, in all honesty. Whereas the Corrupted Gauntlet is a different game completely. The Corrupted Gauntlet is much harder. Let me just make it similar size. The Corrupted Gauntlet is much harder, much funner, much more annoying, more likely to kill you, much more money. The Corrupted Gauntlet is basically better than the gauntlet in every way, almost. That's about it. And I think Corrupted Gauntlet does it go S tier though. I think it does go S tier because the only problem people have with the Corrupted Gauntlet is going dry. Otherwise, there's almost no like complaints with the Corrupted Gauntlet. Good luck on the Stale Baguette. Never lucky. You've got to miss Skim. That's cringe. Yeah, I think I think the only problem people really have with the Corrupted Gauntlet is the going dry. That's about it really. Just click the live button to, to catch up. Yes, if, you, if you're behind on stream, hit the, uh, the click the live button at the bottom of the screen. It will bring you to the, the present. Is it really S tier? It's called the Gauntlet and you don't even get gloves from it. Well, I don't want to, you know, break the language barrier here, but the, the idea of what a Gauntlet is doesn't always have to be the, the Gauntlets that go on your hands. There's another meaning for the word Gauntlet, right? Gauntlet taught me the game. Gauntlet teaches people a lot of games. You, you learn a lot from the Gauntlet. I think it's it's pretty pretty standard. Jad for S tier. Okay, I'm just going to ban you. Um, not because you deserve to be banned, but um, I just think it's funny. You're, you're, you're looking for the attention. You got it. All right. Oh, look. Winner Todd and Tempros on here. Let's do Winner Todd and Tempros first. Winner Todd. All right. Hot take. Winner Todd sucks. I fucking hate Winner Todd. He's F tier. Fuck Winner Todd. The hell, who the hell is Winner Todd? You know? Constantly. Oh, look at me. I'm going to do damage for no fucking reason. You're not wearing the right clothes. Oh, look at me. Everyone's racist around me. That's totally fine. I'm not going to do extra damage to them. Oh, look at me. You're cutting fucking wood. That's fine. Oh, you're fletching? Interrupted. Oh, you're fletching again? Interrupted. Oh, you're fletching? Interrupted. Oh, you started fletching again for the fifth time? The same? Interrupted. Fuck off. Fuck off, Temporos. Winnetod. Get out of here. Temporos, however, the only problem with Temporos, okay? This is a hot take. The only problem with Temporos is everyone else in the fucking game. Solid Temporos sucks because you can't AFK for a second. You have to, like, stay on top of it. Okay, the, the more time you're not, like, you have to be reasonably efficient with Temporos if you're soloing. You do Temporos in the team, the problem with Temporos is every other fucker there. They are shit. Otherwise, Temporos is pretty good. Uh, Temporos will go C tier. It's not a bad, not a bad, not a bad little boy, to be honest. I don't mind it. Winter Dot is S tier because you get, can get how Crime Man's killed. 
Um, no, not good enough, to be honest. All right, Jad. Jad is the ultimate boss that everyone had to face when they were a kid. And uh, everyone that really has to face when they start learning PVM. You go to 5Ks, Jad is the man. He's the gatekeeper, okay? This guy is the high-level community of NPCs. You don't get Jad certification, you don't get the fire cape. Jad is a good boss. Jad fight is kind of shit, to be honest. It's very slow, it's very simple. It's very, just stand away, range him, you're good. Interrupted, excuse me? It, is, did I say something wrong about interrupted? Thank you for the $2, steamed Keith, steamed hams. Um, I think Jad is... Just purely the fight caves, Jad. I think um, it's definitely not S tier because you just get a, a cape and a pet. Thank you. I think um, outside of that, the, the, the fight is kind of just stand back and range. It's more simple than people make it make it out to be. It does teach you a little bit about prey flicking, but really I think most people just come out of there with a high heart rate and shit in their pants when they're first learning. So it probably is a B tier fight. Of all things, cape is overrated. I don't really think the cape matters at that point. Then you have Zuck. I will be honest with you, the Zuck fight itself, like the fight of Zuck, not the Inferno, just Zuck fight, is really good. Well, the Inferno is really good too, to be honest. The whole thing is, in my opinion, S tier. I think the Zuck fight is S. Absolutely. I've only done it four times. I've only been to Zuck four times. I've only got four Inferno capes. I've, I've only entered the Inferno four times in my life. So I, I do have a 100% success rate in the Inferno. So I think my opinion is a little more valid than most people's. But I think the Zuck fight is, is overall excellent. I think it's really well done. They did a good job of it. Zuck is S tier. Zolcano, big dummy mummy. Will kill you for almost no reason. Good rewards. Zolcano can go B tier as well. Zolcano, it's not bad. It's not bad. We don't mind Zolcano. Especially, I, I have an insane bias as Zolcano because I was once in there with a Venny, right? Um, it was just like two of us. Um, and I think I interrupted his solo kill and then he died at the very end and then he came back as the boss was dying and I got a crystal tool seed right in front of him and that felt fucking good. So because of that alone, Zolcano gets a B tier. I think in, in my book, that's not a bad shout. Sit to the Venny. Otherwise, it's, it's not a bad fight, not a bad reward. It's like, it's really good money. If you don't want to do the gauntlet and you want crystal shards, Zolcano is a great alternative. It's good fun with people. It's excellent. Now we have the four boys. Now, we rated these last week based on Desert Treasure 2. This is now based on actual bosses, post-quest bosses. I haven't done the Awakened versions myself, but I have looked at the Awakened versions, and I think that's enough for me to give an opinion on it. Um, so, we're going to look at it. Ah, uh, shit. Hold on. Let's do Awakened versions separately, hey? Can I not grab that? Thank you. Oh, they're behind Tamboros. Okay. Let me just, uh... What the fuck? Let me just grab these two boys real quick. Alright, so we have awakened versions, okay? Okay, fuck it. Who cares? Alright. Who cares? Fuck it. I don't care. Fuck the Awakened versions. The Awakened versions are good, okay? They're fine. They're fun. But I think the normal version of Vardavis, I, I just, I, I don't have time for that shit. I can't be fucked, okay? It's a tier list. Okay? It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be right. Vardavis fight. Excellent. Vardavis drop rate. The worst of all of them. Vardavis is uh, a meme, to be honest. Everyone did Vardavis at the start before we knew the drop rates because uh, everyone found that Vardavis was the most mechanically skilled to do. Arguably the most fun fight, it wasn't. But it was the most mechanically skilled fight, right? So it was more credible if you could do Vardavis. But instead you're just cheesing axe movements. To be honest with you, while it is a fun fight, it is a great experience and I do I, I do have the pet and I do like the Vardavis fight. It's also unnecessarily just like a shit show for no reason. I don't like that the Fang is super strong on it, but you can't really do much about that. That's the Fang's problem, not Vardavis's. I think it might even be, it might be B tier. It might be C, I don't know. I think the, I think like doing it and thinking about it more, it might be a B. I think it's a B tier fight to be honest. 
I think so. In terms of Awakened, I, I'm just not going to touch Awakened with this list. We'll do Awakened another time when I can be fucked. Just the Vardavis fight in general. I, I feel like... It's cool with the new mechanics, but it's just like if you misclick, it's kind of it, right? If you're at the end of the fight and you misclick or you make one mistake, you're spending more time eating and getting fucked than you are doing more damage. And you, you just, you, you're risking too much for no fucking reason for a worse drop rate. The pet's cool. Yeah, the pet's badass, dude. Next, you have Leviathan. In my opinion, the most fun of the bosses. I think Leviathan's great. There's still risk. You can still get killed. You can still get fucked. Um... And I like, I, I think, thinking about it, I didn't like at first that the specs didn't work on the back of the deck, but I think I like that it does. It kind of helps you, st like, helps, helps you manage your spec a bit better, you know, you're not chasing it too much. I think Leviathan might even be S tier, to be honest. You just get in, you fight. It is the only boss that you can't control when you fight. Like, the other three bosses, you start the fight when you're ready. Leviathan, you're there and you keep going. And while that is annoying, I think that's better, because it stops people kind of just... It, it kind of keeps you on your toes. It means, fuck, you're into the next fight. You either leave or you're doing the next fight. You don't really have time to sit there and, and get your shit together. You've got eight seconds and then you're, bam, Leviathan's back. Get moving. I like that you can also measure how long the fight goes for. You can measure how much you want to pray flick before you choose to stun him. You, it's to your own comfort. And I think that that sort of customization on how difficult you want the boss to be is really cool. It's really niche and I think it allows you to just kind of learn at your own pace you can speed it up when you want to you get better at life and you get better at prey flicking that'll help you in content later like the inferno absolutely it's awesome i think it's great duke i had a really big opinion on duke when it first came out i thought it was shit i was like why the hell am i making potions on duke every 10 minutes this is terrible you can't stack potions but then you start grinding the duke and you realize duke ain't that bad the duke's good the potion system does suck the chip damage is a bit annoying um he's incredibly tanky for no fucking reason He's a big boy. His normal drop table is a bit shit. Like, it's always pizza time. It's always a pineapple pizza party. The pet's awesome. Um, I think it would be better if you could stack up two, like, stack up potions. Like, you get two potions in your inventory, and then you can have two in the barrels ready to go. I know that will change the, the kills per hour quite a lot, but I just think it would be more convenient than, like, you know, um, running through and misclicking and getting hit for 65 or getting hit by a stun and then you're losing damage for no reason i don't like how people sit in there cheesing mining i think it's cringe it's just to show off basically i think duke's probably a tier it might even be s tier really he might be s tier he's a really good boss i think yeah it might be s tier Pet doesn't have an emote, so Sage, the Leviathan, yeah, I know. Nor does Duke, yeah. Where the hell are all the raids bosses? Oh, we did a raids boss tier list the other day, uh, so a couple weeks ago, so they'd be in that tier list, that's why they're not in here. And we got the Whisperer. In my opinion, I was first like a big fan of the Whisperer. Great fun, loved it. Thought the Whisperer was a great fight, it's awesome. Then I realized the Whisperer is the slowest fucking boss of them all. Uh, it's Mage only, which in my position personally is rough because I don't have a Shadow yet on the Gim. So it is the most taxing boss. I don't have an Imbued Heart either, I can't fucking get one. Uh, the, mechanically, the fight is excellent. It's beautiful. Consistently changing prayers. It's a zero damage boss fight if you do it correctly. It's awesome. Uh, the last phase is as no, the last phase is awesome. But I don't like the I don't like the um, sanity system because I think it is annoying. But once you manage it, it is pretty. Like, it's a very manageable system at the same time. It's just really punishing if things go wrong, right? But it is really manageable at the same time. Slowest but highest drop rates. Yes, I think the whisper can probably go. It might be B with Vardavis, it might be A tier. Once you start doing like, once you do like 150 plus kills and you're like constantly doing the same puzzles over and over, it's probably better with a shadow. It might be like A with a shadow, maybe B without the shadow. I think the shadow will really change the way the fight goes. Punishing slash uh, equals have to get better. Yeah, pretty much. Without a shadow, I'd probably just put it in S. I think it might be A with a shadow, B without the shadow, but we'll put it in A anyway, just for argument's sake, I'd say. Prayerflix and Whisper are great, yeah. I mean, it was, it's the same Leviathan, right? They're both great. But that is the tier list wrapped up there, boys. The bossing tier list. This is my opinion. It's my correct opinion. Um, you might not agree with all of it. That's because you're an idiot. Um, and I'll give you the rundown. F tier, behind me, garbage bosses. Elemental, the free to hide bosses, Winnetot. They're all shit. They're just crap. Like, they're, the, they're annoying to grind because they're either too deep in the wilderness that do unnecessary amounts of damage in multi-combat for you to get fucked anyway. And then you've got these two bosses, which require keys to get nothing out of them anyway.
Thank you, mate. I appreciate that. Thank you for the thank you for the titties. Um, and then Winter Todd is just annoying as shit. Like just interrupting you all the time. It's crap. Absolutely shit. Uh, e tier, you have basically anything in the E tier boss list. You're only grinding if you absolutely need to. Uh, the Sracknus pet, sorry, Sracknus boss, you're really just doing for the the cudgel, which is crap to just do CAs. Cerberus, you're only grinding if you need the boots. Otherwise, it's really just a terrible boss to grind with a terrible drop table, a terrible system. That's just sinking prayer pots for no reason. And the two wilderness bosses are just, they're too deep in the worldy to be worth the grind, I think. Especially the Scorpio. The money isn't worth it at the moment until they buff the drop table, which they're doing soon. And the Fossil Island guy is just shit. D tier. Um, Aaron's and Varax are annoying Barrows Brothers of the lot. They're not annoying to fight, just of the lot. Like Varax hits through prayer, so automatically he's the worst. And uh, Aaron is unironically the tankiest because you're not maging him, so. Um, otherwise, they're pretty simple. D tier, like Krill and Kriara are not worth the fight with, in terms of what the drop tables are like. They're shit. Corp is annoying because it's a long fight just to not get a shield half the time from people. Uh, the Archaeologist in the Wilderness is it's all right, but you're only doing it for a crossbow than leaving. Venonatus is crap because, uh, one, it's in deep wildy, multi, so um, while you might be having fun making good money, you're going to get pile drive by a team eventually, and it's just it's demotivating for a lot of people. And Dusk is annoying because you can't even step under him without getting fisted. Uh, he has he just hits you through prayer for no reason. He completely changes his attack style without almost any notice. Uh, so it's just a lot of unnecessary damage on the fight that doesn't really feel rewarding enough for what the damage you take. The other three, Barrows Brothers and C tier, they're just easier to kill than the other two, slightly easier, so they're there. Dagonoffs, they're just there because they're, I mean, look, the bones are good once you've done the expert tier, but they're pretty just average bosses to kill. Not super hard, not super rewarding. Um, the Archer's Ring's worth a lot of money because people are idiots. Spindel is better than Venonatus because it's just better to grind the solo boss because it's easier to... Uh, get away from PKs. It's easier to pull your own drops. It's easier to kill in general. It's a lot safer and you can teleport out when you need to. So it's just a it's better to do the singles plus bosses. That's just a fact. Uh, Callisto, good fun, but same problems with Venonatus, just a slightly better table and slightly less annoying. Uh, in terms of mechanics, the chip damage isn't as bad. And then Hespori is a good boss. No complaints about Hespori. Scatizo, same thing, just kind of crap, but kind of good. And Tempros is all the same. Like C tier is basically just bosses that are fine. Nothing inherently wrong with them, nothing inherently amazing about them. B tier, Giant Mole, always money, always good. Giant Mole's good fun. Dagonoff Rex, you can AFK him with blood magic all day. So it makes him better than the other two Dagonoffs because it's a lot more free. A lot more, a lot less taxing on your resources. Uh, Ziliana and Bandos are a, a lot more fun to solo and a lot more rewarding in terms of soloing as well, I believe. Vedion, same as uh, Callisto and Venonatus, just a better drop table. And Arte being above Callisto for being singles. Nightmare is good. Nightmare is good fun, um, good in teams. It could do with a better drop table system like Cowfight Queens. Otherwise, the Nightmare, it teaches you a lot. But my favorite thing about the Nightmare is tanking. And you, you wear full Justy, you choose the tank. Everyone's on the other side of the Nightmare. And then out of nowhere, you decide to just take your armor off to switch tank quickly. And she melees everyone in the room and kills them all. That's good fun, good to troll of. Phantom Muspire B tier, it could be higher. But I think the Phantom Muspire is more about printing money than it is giving uniques. Which, in my opinion, is less rewarding for a boss fight. Uh, Jagex breaks it every second fucking update. The mage attack just hits you through prayer and fucks you for no reason. So, uh, the Phantom Muspire, in my opinion, is not as good as it could be. Uh, the fight overall could, you know, it's it's fun with the new mechanics, but it's a, it's just another Tebow shadow fucking you no know, pile driving boss at the end of the day. Dawn is better than Dusk because you can stand under her. Doesn't really hit you through prayer as much. A lot easier to kill. Very simple. No issues. Sire, unironically, not a bad grind if you have a, a Fang and a Void Waker especially. Um, when you get into the Rhythm of the Sire, it can be really good, even though the drops are horrendous. Same for the Smoke Devil, really, just D-Claws. House Teleport method is excellent. A lot of people say the Shadow method is good too. I'm sure it is. Normal Gauntlet is great. It's good entry mode content, like, like entry mode endgame content. It's awesome. As well as Jad. I mean, Jad sets a good, par, a good bar, a good pinnacle for where to start off. Um... PVM again, your fire cape is definitely prestigious, but it's not the most difficult. Zolcano is good fun. Will kill you, but good fun, rewarding. Vardivus seems like it's a bit OTT. Uh, the drop rates are the highest, the kills are the quickest of the four um, DT bosses. By, by high drop rates, I mean like rarest, like it's, it's harder to get the rare drops. Um, but I feel like the, the, the fight is just overextended for no reason. When things speed up, it's kind of like you're more or less just. It's more of a time crunch than it is actually, like, punishing. It's just annoying at the end of the day. 
Uh, you can do it fluidly, or you can make one mistake, you get hit, have to start eating, and then it's game over. Next is actually a good boss to grind. Very rewarding, very profitable. Try not to do it in masses. Try to do like teams of like five to eight. You'll find the most fun there. KBD is a great boss. Bit of risk getting to him, but it's good fun. It's awesome. No issues with KBD. Does damage, gives rewards. Great pet. No problems. Calvaron, again, a great fucking singles plus boss. You do everything right in Calvaron, you take no damage. Zero issues with, with Calvaron. It's, it's absolutely well done. Same for Zora and Vorkarth. They're well done bosses, well designed. They're money printers, unfortunately. Zora's unique drops are honestly really good, and the system for the mutagens is really good. Vorkarth is just a lot more, um, I think, fun uh, to grind long term at least. The bones are obviously always rewarding. You're guaranteed to make money, um, and you can always switch it up with range and mage, uh, melee if you really want to. The Mimic... The, the Mystic. The Mimic is a good fight. We like uh, we like the Mystic. It's always fun doing the Mystic. It's, it's free, free clue score rolls. And the Kraken is S, is A tier, sorry. Kraken is A tier. It's perfect. It's one dimensional, but it's got a great fucking drop table. Nothing wrong with the Kraken at all. Whisperer, good fun mechanically. Great long fucking fight, which is annoying, but otherwise, good chance of getting uniques. Whisperer does a good job. Kavak Queen, one of the best bosses ever designed. Uh, looks great, thick boy, huge. Hit through prayer is annoying, I get it, but if you don't like the Calvary Queens because you haven't grinded it yet, trust me. Do the Calvary Queen grind, get yourself a blue Karis, stand, walk under him, use the throw. Uh, however you want to fight him, it's up to you. You have many ways to fight him, you can choose to venge a lot of his damage, which is also another great technique. He does hit hard, but the Calvary Queens drop table, in my opinion, is the best way to do a boss drop table when you're doing content like Zora, Vorkarp, and Muspire. Instead of making money printers, um, apply that drop table from Calvary Queen, especially to someone like Fasani Nightmare. I like that you get a guaranteed consumer roll and a guaranteed normal roll. I just love that drop table system. Darok is S tier because I'm a sellout. Two bucks, put him up there. So fuck Darok, he's C tier. Fasani Nightmare, great, great fight. Fasani Nightmare is arguably one of the best design bosses in the game mechanically, visually, sound wise. Everything about Fasani Nightmare is has been done right, except maybe the drop table. So you can't really argue much uh, more about Fasani Nightmare. If you do Fasani, you'll be very happy with yourself. Not a single person learns for signing and goes, I hate that I now know that boss. It's good fun to do once you get it down. Hydra is also really well designed. It's really well done. It's perfect for a Slayer boss at the end. It's, you know, you need a high Slayer level, so it's locked behind that and a task. Uh, it's very rewarding. It's arguably AFK and free, but also can definitely fuck you. Can definitely kill you. Is Fasani harder than Hulloth? Yeah, Fasani is harder than Kripa Gauntlet, in my opinion. Yes. Um, then you've got Kripa Gauntlet. It's excellent. There's not, the only problem people have with Corrupted Gauntlet is that they go dry. Which isn't bad, right? If it's Corrupted Gauntlet, that's the, if it's going dry, that's the problem with content, then that's not bad content at all. That's just that's the RNG, that's the name of the game. So I think Corrupted Gauntlet is S tier no matter what. Same for the Inferno slash Zuck. The Zuck fight itself and the Inferno is S tier. It's great fight, great content. Jagex did an amazing job there. Leviathan and Duke, same. Duke wasn't at first, but I feel like Duke really is S tier. It is a really good, quick fight. And Leviathan is so, like, you can approach the Leviathan however you want. You can do a good job. What's up, Ryan? And that's the tier list. Bossing tier list. Not rage bosses. Not uh, quest bosses. But that is... That, that's the verified King Condor tier list right there, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to save it. And we're going to do some hard Crime Man content. This is the easiest room in the raid. It's quite simple. you got a big boy. Look at him. God damn. Fuck, mate. Look at that boy. It's huge. Oh, <laughs> boy.